It was a hot and dusty day, July 31st, 1982. Nancy Lee and I gathered with our families and a couple hundred friends of ours at Our Redeemer's Lutheran Church in Williston, North Dakota, and committed ourselves to each other as husband and wife. And we did that through our very public promises to each other. We wanted to publicly proclaim what we intended to do from that day forward and forevermore. We wrote our vows. We made a lot of promises to each other. We practiced speaking them out loud beforehand so that when that moment came in the ceremony, we were fully present. And everything we said to each other in those moments really boiled down to just one big promise, that we would be faithful to each other our whole lives long. Faithfulness is the fundamental foundational groundwork of a healthy marriage. Without faithfulness, loyalty, trust, reliability, and commitment to one another, the marriage would implode. And that faithfulness gets us to the absolute heart and soul of the sixth commandment found in Exodus 20, 14, and also Deuteronomy 5, 18. You shall not commit adultery. From Genesis to Revelation, the scriptures provide a clear image of God going to great lengths to model what a faithful, loyal, trustworthy, reliable, and committed relationship looks like. And God calls us to that standard with one another, specifically in the sixth commandment. The context for all of this, of course, is what we call marriage. Marriage is a remarkable and extraordinary gift of God, a way of living in an, an intentionally deep and purposeful relationship intended for the joy and the shared strength of those who enter it and for the well-being of the entire human community. But here's the deal. It's not always a breeze. To borrow a phrase, stuff happens. You probably know that the first sign or the miracle that Jesus performed took place at a wedding in Cana. It was an amazing experience for people who gathered together. Amazing things happened. The wedding celebration was, though, in grave danger of absolutely coming apart at the seams. And the marriage, which was only just beginning, was suddenly in danger of coming to a screeching halt due to a social and cultural blunder of biblical proportions. You know what happened? They ran out of wine. Why is that important? Well, wine was a central ingredient in a community celebration. And having enough for everyone was the responsibility of the married couple. Running out brought great shame on the couple and their family. So, Jesus interrupts that social blunder with grace. And Jesus helps a couple save their dignity. He probably saved that wedding and most likely the marriage as well by bringing grace and joy to that sacred moment. Over and over again, God is revealed to be the biggest fan of marriage, going to amazing lengths to show us how to preserve it. And that gives us some context for the sixth commandment. When you look at the heart of the Ten Commandments, even the cowboy version of the Ten Commandments, honor your ma and pa, uh, no telling tales or fibs, get yourself to Sunday meeting, and especially the Sixth Commandment in Exodus 20, 14, no fooling around, is really about maintaining the foundational integrity of relationships. And you know, it almost seems like a no-brainer, right? Faithfulness, loyalty, reliability, honesty, integrity, and commitment. We should just expect that, right? We might even wonder why God would even put no adultery in the top 10, because if you only have 10 commandments, uh, why waste it on something that just seems so obvious. Nobody enters into a marriage with the thought that someday they're going to be unfaithful, disloyal, unreliable, dishonest, or uncommitted. No one wakes up on their wedding day, or really any day after that, 
expecting to break their wedding promises. Nobody starts out a marriage that way. So it seems obvious that when you enter into a marriage, you're going to stay together and you're going to be faithful to each other. So why waste one of the top 10 on marriage? What is God trying to say to us about marriage? And more specifically, what is being said about God in this commandment? I'd like to offer two responses. First, the sixth commandment is part of the 10 commandments because God loves us endlessly and wants to protect us from all that would hurt or even destroy us. God wants to help us live in thriving lives with one another, in thriving relationships. God knows that unfaithfulness happens, and when it does, as some of you know from painful experience, it crushes the person who has been cheated on. And it also slowly kills the soul of the person who was unfaithful. Everybody loses. Nobody wins. God knows that. God knows that that happens. It's not God's desire, of course, but God knows that it happens. So the reason that God gives us the sixth commandment is to remind us that marriage is a sacred gift. God gives this gift and calls us to be really proactive about nurturing this gift and to recognize that even though we enter into deeply committed relationships with promises of faithfulness, that they can crumble apart very quickly. So God wants us to be vigilant and wants us to be reminded that God is committed to our marriages and to helping build the best relationships we can. The sixth commandment is a gift to remind us that marriage is profoundly important to God. It's deeply important to us and that it's a gift. Second, we've been given the sixth commandment, the call to be faithful, loyal, reliable, honest, and committed to the integrity of our primary relationships because God wants to say something about God's self to us whether we're married or not. So if you're within the sound of my voice today and you're not married or even in a deeply committed relationship, there's still something profoundly important here for all of us. Every one of the commandments reveals something about God's lavishly grace-filled and loving character. In a very real sense, every commandment communicates something about God's faithfulness to us. The reason why that, that's so important, even radical, is because when the sixth commandment was given to the people of God, Israel was surrounded by all kinds of other gods, and none of those gods were, were known for faithfulness. To the people of Israel, those gods were fickle and erratic. Their minds were seemingly changed by the direction of the wind. They were unreliable. You never knew where you stood with these gods, and you, you never knew where the gods stood. Into all of that, the God of Abraham, the only true God, breaks in and says, there are no other gods. I am the only God, and I am faithful and loyal and reliable and committed to you. You can always count on me. You can always depend on me. I am your God. That was the original message then, and that is still the enduring message now and for all time. So God gives us the sixth commandment to show us God's character. And when God talks about being faithful, loyal, reliable, honest, committed, and full of integrity, the metaphor that God uses to help us visualize God's faithfulness is marriage. God connects faithfulness to marriage. And so every marriage becomes a living, breathing sign of God's grace, God's enduring mercy, God's steadfast love and faithfulness. The sixth commandment is there to remind us that God is faithful and loyal and reliable and committed to us. And even in those times when human marriages are rocked by unfaithfulness, God remains faithful and constantly calls us back to that powerful truth that God will always be faithful. Friends, here's what I know about the reality of this moment right here and right now as we're gathered together from many different places. Many of us in this place have healthy, thriving relationships and marriages. But some of you hearing my voice today have real heartache about all of this 
And that makes all of our hearts ache right along with you. For a host of reasons, a, a marriage didn't work out and hearts are somewhere on a continuum between broken and healing. That's what I know. What I want you to know right along with me is that the creator of all that is, the God of faithfulness and loyalty, reliability, honesty, integrity, and commitment, the God behind the sixth commandment has two promises for us. God's first promise is this, I am the Lord, your God, who heals broken hearts, and I will heal your broken heart. And secondly, God says, I am the Lord, your God, who always gives new beginnings, and I will give you a new beginning. Now, that may not happen overnight. Probably not. It takes a long time when a marriage falls apart to put the pieces back together. But God's promise to us is that God will always be faithful. God will bring healing and God will bring a fresh start to all of us. God has another promise for us. No matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter how faithful you are or unfaithful you have been to God, God says to you today, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will always be faithful to you no matter what. And that's a promise that is rooted in the cross and a promise that God wants to renew in our lives right now. So what do we do with all this? How do we make this sticky? Well, first, if there is pain, if there is heartache and brokenness in your relationship and you need some help, ask for that. A wise person once said in response to the devastation of a broken relationship, that didn't happen to me that happened for me. You have the opportunity to take all of that and join it to the power of God's love and grow from that. You can. And that step isn't up to anyone but you. If you need help, just ask. Secondly, if you can find your wedding vows, find a copy of the promises you made to your spouse on your wedding day. Read them together. You made them together, now read them together. Find at least one thing in those promises that you will recommit to this week. If you're in a significant relationship and haven't had the opportunity to actually make some promises to your significant other, then friends, do that. Be purposeful, be intentional, be brave and courageous. Whatever the case, this is all about maintaining the foundational integrity of your relationship. And last, there's a really good chance you're not the same person you were today that you were on your wedding day or when you entered into a deep and committed relationship. People grow and change. So talk with your partner, your spouse, your significant other about how you see yourself as evolving in your relationship. Don't talk about how you want them to change. (laughs) Talk about how you are growing and then talk about how that can strengthen your relationship together. On that hot, dusty, late afternoon in July of 1982, when Nancy Lee and I stood together and made commitments to faithfulness, loyalty, reliability, honesty, integrity, and commitment, there were some things that we knew. There were some things that we did not know. We did not know what joys would overwhelm us or what challenges would undermine us. We didn't know what tears would toughen us or what laughter would loosen us. There was no way we could have known what headaches would pound on us or what heartbreaks would galvanize us. Despite all that, there were some things that we did know. We did know that we had each other, that God had us, and that that was enough to build on. Today, I want to speak those very words into every relationship that you have and encourage you to embrace the call to be faithful, loyal, reliable, honest, and committed to the integrity of your relationships that God has given you. And that, my friends, will be enough. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the commitment that you have made to us, 
the faithfulness that you have breathed into the relationship we have with you. We pray that we would take all of that and that we would live into those things in every relationship that we have, especially the primary relationships in our lives. We thank you for today and we trust you with every tomorrow. It's in the strong name of Christ that we pray and everybody said, 